Hi, I'm Ksenia and welcome to Guiding Star Astrology. I'm your Astro Weather Girl here with this week's Astro Weather Report. I'm going to show you how the stars are going to affect your life this week. To get the most out of this video, listen to the intro so that you know what's going to affect you and when it's going to happen in the week ahead. Lastly, use the timestamps in the description to go to your rising sign, sun sign and moon sign in order to learn how things will affect you personally. I'd like to point out that this will be a general read. We're looking at the general influence of the stars upon our life. If you would like to know something more specific about your life and how the stars are specifically interacting with you, I would suggest getting a reading with a professional astrologer. You can do so with me through the link in the description below if you would like. I'd like to give a special welcome to anyone who is new to astrology. You're so welcome here at this channel. If you would like to learn to read your own astrology chart, I offer a short course. It's very cheap and it's lots of fun. The link is in the description below. To all of my friends who join me here each week, who like and share my videos and subscribe to my channel, I do love you. To my gold and silver and bronze star family members, I do pray for you every day. I thank the universe for your presence in my life. If anyone would like to join the Guiding Star family, the link is also in the description below. And now to this week's spotlight. Happy birthday! Did you know you can get a full year ahead reading with me with all the astrological bells and whistles including what to expect in the year ahead and key dates to look out for? We look at perfections, transits, dashes, eclipses, your solar return chart and the progress chart. It's the best gift you can give yourself for your birthday. Book now at the website and happy birthday. Well, thanks for joining me, Ksenia, as we explore the heavens this week. Right from the get-go, we have some very interesting energies. It's going to be a busy, busy week with astral energies interacting with, uh, astral planets, I should say, interacting with one another. But the best electional days for the week ahead are actually going to be on the 25th and 26th. This is Melbourne time, I might add as well. Uh, the 26th of May uh, in the morning. Uh, there will be a shift in the afternoon so if you need to start something new begin something do it on these days but on the 26th in the morning also the 29th is a good electional day as well do be aware though when I recommend days uh, being good for starting new ventures instigating new things taking a, a step forward that you should also check to see if the moon is void of course at any time during those days as well because that will mitigate what I'm what I'm explaining here but electionally the generally best days are those three days this week 25th 26th and 29th we also have um, a number of planets out of bounds this week as well and I spoke a lot about the out of bounds planets last week and that's that's because throughout this month we've got a lot of action from these out of bounds planets and they, they're a bit of a wild card effect. We don't know what we're going to get. We might feel a little bit out of control with the areas of life that are ruled by the planets that go out of bounds at any given time. So I'll tell you which ones are. Mercury is out of bounds all week and it's going to start retrograding in an out of bounds motion too. So where whereabouts in your chart is Virgo and Gemini? What houses do they rule? That's where you might be feeling a bit out of control because Mercury is out of bounds. Now Mars is out of bounds until the 25th of May and of course Mars rules Aries and in traditional astrology also rules Scorpio. So those areas of life might be feeling a little bit out of control as well. Venus comes into its out of bounds state uh, on the 24th of May and will last all week. Um, the moon comes into its out of bounds state on the 27th of May and will be in that state till the end of the week at least. Um, and of course the, the signs ruled by the moon are Cancer. What house is Cancer in your whole sign astrology chart? That's where you might be feeling a little bit out of control emotionally. 
And Venus rules Taurus and Libra. What do Taurus and Libra rule in your chart? So as you can see, the majority of the horoscope is going to be affected by these outs of, out of bounds planets. We've got so many of them out of bounds all at once that over 50% of the, the areas of our life governed by these planets are going to feel a little bit wild, a little bit um, you know, eccentric, a little bit out of control. So don't be surprised if this is a week like no other, <laughs> thanks to these out of bounds planets. So the first energy we have playing out this week is Saturn turning retrograde. Here is Saturn in Aquarius and we'll put a big R next to him so we know what's going on. Saturn turning retrograde, looking like he's going backwards in the sky. Now, as you can see, Saturn is in a position where he is almost coming into opposition with the sun. The sun is moving in this direction throughout the year and for six months of the year the sun is in opposite hemisphere to Saturn and when that occurs that's when we get a retrograde. So you'll never have a Saturn Sun conjunction while Saturn is in retrograde that just does not occur because the sun must be in this hemisphere of sort of six or so houses opposite where Saturn is sitting for a retrograde to occur. The same goes for Jupiter Neptune, Pluto, all these outer planets beyond Earth, Mars and Uranus, uh, they all uh, get a, a retrograde motion when the Sun goes opposite them. So that's how the chart looks with a retrograde motion. Um, but this, this week we're focusing on Saturn. What is this going to bring us? Well, it's going to be very intense for anybody. This is happening on the 23rd of May. It's going to be very intense for anyone with the Moon at this degree, around 13 degrees of Aquarius, because of course, that's our Sadi Sati. Now, if you're familiar with the Sadi Sati process, it is when Saturn is transiting the house before the moon, the house of the moon and the house after the moon, your moon in your natal chart I'm talking about here. And of course, if you have your moon at 13 degrees of Aquarius, where Saturn is turning retrograde, well, boom, <laughs> you're going to get like double whammy effect of Saturn conjunct the moon. You will have be having the transit at the moment, then Saturn will go, uh, go backwards and then it will come across again. And so you're going to get these three hits of Saturn to the moon during your Sadi Sati seven year period. I have a video all about the Sadi Sati and what that's all about. If you're interested in finding out more, it's in my playlist uh, to do with astrological questions. So check that out in my playlists. But uh, I won't go into that now, but just know that if you are having a Saturn transit to the moon, it will be felt more intensely with Saturn going retrograde. One of the things that occurs when Saturn goes retrograde is we start to visit our old karma because Saturn is a planet of karma. And we've had him direct for quite some time now, which has been lovely. And so we're moving ahead in life. Now Saturn, the planet of karma goes retrograde and we start to revisit our old karmic habits, our wounds, our old karmic fears. And I, I actually find this is a good thing because we revisit them in order to purge them, to perhaps transcend them. So, you know, things will come up, things will be brought to the surface, you know, what am I afraid of? Where am I holding myself back? Where am I putting boundaries around my life that are preventing me from moving forward? And if you're conscious, if you're acting with higher consciousness and awareness and you can observe yourself and these emotions and these behaviors and these patterns, then you can actually start to enact change to bring about a different momentum in life. So don't see Saturn retrograde as something to be afraid of or like, oh my God, no. Um, see it as a, a, an opportunity to transcend those old karmic fears that and, and parameters that, that keep popping up again and again and again in your life. And maybe it might be a time to sort of work towards ending some self-sabotage as well. Now, no matter what other astrologers might say about Saturn retrograde, it is nothing to be afraid of because it happens six months out of every 12, we experience a Saturn retrograde. So it's familiar to humanity. We know about this. It's part of life and we're almost like quite well adjusted to it, really. So don't see it as anything negative. But some of the things that might occur with a Saturn retrograde is that we may have more trouble with personal boundaries. Why is this? 
Well, it all depends on what you're like natally. Some people have too little in the way of personal parameters and some people have like way too many limitations and, and blockages and restrictions and fears. When Saturn goes retrograde, so, um, restrictions, fears, blockages, they go internal. So we no longer are sort of seeing blocks in our external environment to us, you know, or the boss says, no, mum and dad say I can't do this. My bank account is limiting me from doing X, Y, Z. We're not seeing external things blocking us. Suddenly our own fears, our own limitations, again, those karmic, you know, patterns, they're the limitations that hold us back. They're the blockages. Now, some people, they have none. They have no inhibitions and away they go. In fact, they can go too far when Saturn is retrograde because their, their own lack of personal boundaries um, is almost exacerbated now. Uh, some people who have a lot of restrictions, a lot of that inner critic going tut, tut, tut um, all the time and holding them back, they can actually suffer a lot more from self-sabotage. So we get these polaric extremes when Saturn is retrograding all depending on how we're wired astrologically as individuals. So you'll need to know your chart to know if you're going to go wild with no boundaries or you're going to have too many. But one thing is for sure with this transit, this, this transit of Saturn in its retrograde motion, um, boundaries are no longer moderated and they go to an extreme now. So think about your usual behavior, you know, are you someone who has no inhibitions, no boundaries, no one, no, no sort of concept of what is appropriate or not perhaps and try and act with conscious awareness during this Saturn retrograde for six months about boundaries try and you know maybe you might need to put boundaries in place with lovers or children or friends and sort of you know not let people cross the line and take advantage of you some people who have too many boundaries and they tend to self-sabotage themselves all the time, maybe you need to act with conscious awareness over the next six months of you know, taking a risk, stepping out, out of your comfort zone, trying something new and facing your fears. So that's the energy of Saturn when he's doing his retrograde motion. But one area where this might be challenging for the next six months may be in the big wide world. Now, I'm not a mundane astrologer. Mundane astrologers look at world events someday, hopefully when I'm not so busy running after children and being a single mum, I will get the chance to study and research and go into mundane astrology much more as I would love to do. But for now, we're just surviving. <laughs> we're just in survival mode. But out there in the big wide world, in mundane astrology, this Saturn retrograde could bring some upheaval um, because Saturn is squaring Uranus all this year. So here is Uranus in Taurus and here is um, Saturn in Aquarius. And so Saturn is going to start heading back to making a square again with Uranus. We're moving back into that territory. And let's face it, look at the fallout from 2020, what occurred that year. Um, there might be, there are a lot of people with too many limitations and too governed by rules and regulations and they're criticizing everybody else for not being, you know, you know, living within boundaries, living within restrictions that they ab adhere to. And those people are sort of versing off against people who are more Uranian in style, more free, more liberated, and have less personal boundaries. Um, and so we might find that there could be some argy-bargy, some conflict that comes when Saturn goes retrograde, especially when he moves back into that square aspect exact with Uranus. Um, because those personal restrictions and boundaries, remember, are taken to an extreme and that can then play out in what's happening in the world, in the masses, amongst the people. So aware of that, um, try and remember to sort of not foist yourself upon other people with your opinions, your thoughts. Don't let your personal boundaries or lack of um, impede other people's lives. Uh, that would be my suggestion maybe I sound preachy saying that but yeah I think we've all observed people going to extremes over the last uh, 18 months or so okay let's move along Mer Mercury is going to square Neptune also on the day that Saturn goes retrograde so here is Neptune and here is Mercury kaboom whoops that was a terrible aspect line and I do apologize for that one <laughs> um, but this is not a nice 
um, connection, I have to say. Mercury square to Neptune, nobody really likes it very much. It's an energy of lying, deception with words, um, those sorts of the shadow side of Neptune meeting, the communication side of Mercury. It's not much fun. In fact, these two are kind of odd bedfellows at the best of times, even when they're in a good aspect, because Mercury is logic, the intellect, it is our mind, it's how our our brain thinks and brain functions and Neptune's just not in that zone. Neptune is out there in the world of feeling, it's in the world of spirit, it's in the world of intuition and oh, it's like oil and water. So if you're involved in Neptunian pursuits like art, music, spiritual practices, astrology, channeling, metaphysics, any healing modalities, I could go on, but if you're involved in any Neptunian practices, don't be surprised if under this square aspect there are some cranky, logical, analytical voices judging you. Neptune square to Mercury. Mercury is to communicate and here you might you know, cop some angry words or some frustrated words or just, just words that are nasty from um, more, more thought-based, logical-based people. In the reverse, if you're in sort of any mercurial occupations like administration or planning, um, you know, you may, may be involved in sort of something that involves reading, writing, teaching, communicating, guess what? Neptune might dissolve your work. You know, you could quite literally, you know, we have, we've all had those horrible situations where we've done a big long computer thesis, a uh, thesis on the computer, and then boom, suddenly something happens and we don't save it and it's lost. And oh my God, there's all those hours work down the tube. That is entirely possible, plausible under this influence. So either way, you know, we might be getting the hard word if we're a Neptunian style person and if we're the opposite, if we're a Mercurial style person, we might be finding that what we do and who we are is sort of being disintegrated right before our very eyes. So heads up on that one. Now, if we're involved in any kind of marketing or advertising campaigns, they're not going to go as expected under this transit. So don't launch an advertising campaign. You know, I put out every week on Facebook and Instagram the, uh, the astral events of the week. I share those with my uh, social media community and let's just say I know full well that I'm not going to get a good result from what I release on this particular day, but I'll be releasing it nonetheless. I'll, I'll release a, uh, an information about Mercury Square Neptune to my uh, social media community on this day and I just know it's not going to get much traction, so be prepared for that. Communication problems can occur if you're a creative as well, if you're a Neptunian style person, a creative, a photographer, film producer, artist, musician. So, you know, you might find that you know, you send in, have to send an email about a particular piece of work or something and, and it just goes astray, or, you know, or, or you get a negative response where you had hoped for affirmation. You know, things are not going to go as you want them to with those, uh, those things. Plus, we might find if we're Neptunian people that the business regulators of the world, the accountants, the bookkeepers, they might rub the bloom of our creative rose. You know, we want to create and we're getting told you must pay X, Y, Z and then we've got no money to do our creative work, you know. Um, so just expect that it's going to be a bit messy like that. In fact, I would treat this energy a little like you would the Mercury retrograde, which is also coming up this week. We'll talk about that shortly, but treat this day, the 23rd of May, and check in the description box below for your part of the world, what time it will be occurring. Um, treat this energy like a Mercury retrograde. You know, don't buy any new gadgets, don't buy any new devices, don't download any apps, anything like that. Don't get computers mended. Don't sign any important documentations and look, be very careful if you've got to drive anywhere as well. Mercury has the rulership of short travels and cars and what have you, and little transport um, undertakings that we take and there could be accidents on this day or we might not see the road signal turn to red and you know we go through a traffic light or something. We're, we're, it's like we're driving blind. We've got the fog happening. The Neptunian fog is is upon us. So we're not thinking clearly and as, as quickly as we need to if we're going to do some short trips. Um, yeah, treat it like Mercury retrograde. Be very careful and cautious. Then on the 26th of May, we are having um, the wonderful supermoon eclipse 
that's occurring from Gemini. Here is the sun in Gemini to the moon. Whoopsies. In Sagittarius. So full moon in Sagittarius, super moon and eclipse all at once. What a day. Now, if you would like to know about the breakdown for each sign for this eclipse full moon, then do check out my Patreon full moon video where I break it down for every sign and we talk about what's going to happen. But let's just talk in brief about this. And remember, I did do a video just recently with my wonderful colleague from Guiding Star, Joanna. She broke down her perspective on the eclipse and she's a brilliant astrologer. So do check out that video if you want to know more about the eclipse itself. There's not a sign, all sign breakdown with that video um, as there will be with my patron video. But look, the Sarah cycle of this eclipse is actually quite a charming one. We, we talked about this, Joanna and I. This particular Saros cycle of eclipses began many, many hundreds of years ago with a big stellium in the refined and relational sign of Libra, which I think is really, really lovely. Um, so there, there is an emphasis on relationships because of that, the strength of that initial chart. However, like all eclipses, this one's a mixed bag of lollies or the proverbial chocolate box. You never know what you're going to get. We do have to be careful with eclipses, you know, they are not easy to predict because they're volatile, um, a bit like, well, Rahu and Kato, the symbology of the north and south node of the moon. What are Rahu and Kato, the causes of our eclipses? Well, in mythology, they are a dragon cut in half. And just as you would sort of step back a little bit from a dragon cut in half and wouldn't get too close, same goes for the, any eclipse, any eclipse at all, no matter how good that Saros cycle is it can give unexpected results. So be aware, especially if you've got personal planets around these degrees, around five degrees, even 10 degrees of the mutable signs, Gemini, Sagittarius, Pisces or Virgo, you may be experiencing this rather intensely and anything could happen. Remember though with eclipses that it is always for your highest good, your greatest empowerment, it, for your future destiny. So even when something terrible happens, know that the purpose is for the greater good in the long-term scheme of things. Maybe even in the scheme of things beyond this lifetime. So it's a matter of trust, trusting in the divine purpose that, that we need to cling to when we go through eclipses. Again, I just want to encourage people to check out the video with Joanna if you want to know more. But look, this does have the potential to be a very psychic type and prophetic type of eclipse. Listen to your hunches now, trust your intuition, note down your dreams if you have a dream book or that sort of thing. Um, if you pay attention to this psychic guidance that's showing up in your world under this eclipse, you might find that this eclipse energy leads you down the, the path of some truly magnificent experiences in life because it is quite a beautiful eclipse energy. You might have more creative outputs that are successful. You might have more empowering psychic downloads of information and awareness and knowledge that come to you. There may even be opportunity for miraculous healing for some people because the original eclipse in this series was conjunct with Neptune, a planet of healing. So we can look at that as positive. You know, we might be healed. We also, in the negative shadow side of Neptune, might be deceived. So again, mixed bag of lollies, be prepared for whatever comes. And check out the Patreon video if you want to know how it's going to affect you. Then on May the 28th, we've got another square happening to Neptune. And that is a square from Venus. Let's follow this line to Neptune. And this will be what I'm discussing in the All Signs Breakdown for this video. So these two friends, they kind of line up. And they're good mates. In fact, Neptune's the higher octave of Venus, but mm, it's a square aspect. So it's still tough. They line up with some tension and this tension could see us feeling very emotional uh, on the 28th or emotionally confused. If nothing else, we don't, we're pulled one way one minute, we're pulled another way the next minute. We don't quite know where we're at with our own emotions potentially. And our, our perceptions of the world can be very foggy and very unclear. And this is particularly related to perceptions that have to do with Venusian things, money, prosperity, beauty, love. So if you're in a relationship, it could get a bit foggy. If you're concerned about your bank account, you might not know where the money's gone. 
under this energy. Uh, if you work in the beauty industry, something might be just not quite right on this day, like not gelling. Know that this is the energy of Venus square to Neptune. Now worst case scenario, this energy can leave us feeling taken advantage of in some way, like somebody, you know, deceives us, uh, somebody takes advantage of our kind nature, our gentle nature potentially. Another way this can manifest is that we might choose to run an escape from, you know, our unclearness or our fogginess or the harshness of the world in a way that's highly indulgent. And you will need to, if you want to do this, that's fine, but you need to be very conscious of your budget because we can find that the money just vanishes and dissolves with a square to Neptune. So you might think, I'm going to go to a day spa and have a facial because I just can't, can't hack it anymore and I need to go relax. So you go have a facial and then, thank you, that'll be $300. And you're like, what? Hang on, I haven't even got that money in my account. And suddenly all the money is dissolved out of your life. So be conscious and budget aware as much as possible. Basically, your judgments might be a little bit off and financial losses can be the result. So it's fine to escape. It's fine to run away in an indulgent way, but do it with conscious awareness of budget constraints, time constraints, and the, the practical mundane realities of life. Something that Neptune doesn't like very much, but it'll help you to come out better off under this energy if you can keep a little bit of groundedness. Because it is a good day to spend cash on making yourself feel good about yourself. Venus is our self-worth and self-value. So just be conscious of budget. No boundaries Neptune wants to take things to an extreme. And I just want to encourage you to be aware. <laughs> On the 29th of May, we have the second retrograde occurrence for this week. And this is happening with little old Mercury up here. It is turning backwards to all observations from Earth, uh, backwards in the sky. Now this is round number two in this three ringed circus of Mercury retrogrades this year. Um, and this is all occurring this year uh, in air signs. We're having retrogrades from Mercury in all the three air signs. The last one was in Aquarius, now we're in Gemini, and the last one will be in Libra later this year. But this time, one thing that's quite good about this retrograde out of the three is that Mercury is in its own sign. It's in Gemini, the sign that rules. So check where Mercury, sorry, check where Gemini falls in your chart because that's where on, on those themes of that particular house in whole sign astrology will be where you might experience some lost communication, some difficulties with gadgets and electronics, some conversational misunderstandings with others. Now, for me, Gemini is in my fourth house, so I could expect to have some conversational misunderstandings with my family, with my, my perhaps my children or my parents or something. There might be just some, you know, scratching of heads. You're like, oh, I don't really understand what on earth they were on about, you know. Um, or I might send an email to my son saying, don't forget to pick up your lunch. <laughs> and he, he misses that email and he forgets to pick up his lunch. You know, he doesn't get the email. So miscommunications are one of the big things. And look at where Gemini falls in your chart and consider the people that are going to be impacted by that or the realm of your life that's going to be impacted by that. That is where you're going to experience the retrograde upheaval of Mercury. Now on the plus side, one way that a Mercury retrograde can exhibit itself is that people from the past can return to our lives. So again, I'll use the example from my chart, Gemini in the fourth house might mean that old family members come back, you know, some, some long distant relative that I haven't seen in forever and a day, I suddenly make contact with and catch up with. So that can be a lovely, lovely thing. You might experience, depending on where Gemini is in your chart, old lovers coming back, old friends coming back. Lots of reunioning. So in that sense, uh, Mercury Retrograde can bring some reasonably lovely stuff as well. So look for the good and be conscious and aware about the challenges. Finally, for this week's energy, we're getting towards the end of May. Can you believe it? Isn't the time just flying? Mercury um, conjuncts with Venus up here. I'll just do a little line like this on May the 29th. Now, these two will be in planetary war at this stage. That means they're at the same declination and the same degree. So uh, that's occurring. And look, I'm not going to go into a big description of planetary war. I intend to do a video on planetary war for my Patreon community. Um, but 
suffice to say Venus is the victor of the planetary war. But let's look at Mercury conjunct Venus. This is an energy for good news. So you might get some really beautiful news on this day, something positive, something uplifting. Mercury is news and Venus is a benefic planet. So it's all good energy, the combination mixed in the cauldron with these two. Um, so happy tidings come our way. It's also a great day for jumping on the dating apps because Mercury is social media and connections. And what is Venus? Love and romance. So if you are in a position where you're interested in that sort of thing, jump on the dating apps. You might have some luck uh, on, on this particular day. Business meetings can go well with Mercury conjunct Venus. Um, they will leave you with a positive taste in your mouth and you'll feel like, yep, we're progressing, we're moving ahead, things are going well, which is wonderful. Communications with partners can be loving and kind as well and, and very um, auspicious, maybe even forgiving if it's required too. Um, if you're involved in event organization, if you're involved in, you know, social mediations and negotiation processes, um, then these things will, will go smoothly too if you need to negotiate deals and what have you or um, organize events, you know, it's gonna, gonna flourish or the admin tasks required for those things will succeed and do well. And look, taking a pleasant drive is a lovely activity that you can undertake under this energy um, because here is Mercury to take a short trip. Venus is the country. Venus is nature. Going for a drive in nature and enjoying the beauty or, uh, you know, taking a beautiful drive through a lovely leafy suburb or something like that. Beautiful surroundings. You know, you could really enjoy um, maybe a walk or a bike ride or something like that as well. Whatever you do on this particular day, May the 29th, and of course, check the description box to see where it's when it's occurring in your part of the world. But on this particular day, it's going to leave you in a happy place. You know, all your endeavors, all your communications and connections will be more positive. Keep in mind, though, Mercury is retrograde. <laughs> um, so communications can go astray. But generally, what communications you do have that, are, that you receive will be positive and leave you feeling good about yourself. So something to look forward to at the end of the week. Now let's go for our all signs breakdown. And as I said, we're going to be looking at Venus square to Neptune. So we're looking at a square between two mutable signs here. Let's begin with Pisces. We get to go first this week, guys. Yay, us. Okay, Pisces rising, sun or moon people. The square is happening between the first house and the fourth house. And we've got Venus squaring Neptune. So be aware that our judgments and choices may not be very sound. On this day and this would be judgments to do with our mostly with our fourth house realm you know if we've got to make a choice about how we decorate the house or whether what plumber we call to fix that leaky toilet or um, you know what we're doing in the garden if we've got to make a choice on this day just perhaps put it off for a day um, when Venus moves out of this conjunction with Neptune because our, our choices are not sound and we might regret them. You know, the plumber might come and deceive us um, and charge us way more than he should. Um, we might put a plant in the garden in a certain position and it's just like, oh, no way. What was I thinking when I put that plant there? You know, we might decorate the lounge room and buy a whole new set of cushions or something like that for our couch. And then, you know, a week later, we're like, what the, that looks foul. What was I thinking? Poo brown is not the right color for my lounge room. You know, so just be aware that your choices and judgments regarding home and domestic life can be a little bit off kilter on this day. And if you can postpone any of those sorts of decisions, then do so. Not only that, but um, your choices regarding family as well and connections with family might be a little bit um, off kilter as well. So maybe, you know, if, if, if you're in a position of having to parent, this is a, a one of the houses of parenthood, if you're in a position of having to parent children, you know, be aware that you might make some rather un unsound choices about discipline or parameters or treatment of your children uh, on this day. And, and if we're conscious and aware, then we can handle things better and we can make wiser choices, can't we? Um, we stop and we think and we consider what are the repercussions here. So if you're a parent, uh, know that you know you might have to stop and weigh up your choices and, and um, actions on this day. Venus square to Neptune. Now, I'm going to whiz through fairly briefly with today's uh, all signs. I know you're not big fans of long videos, so we'll keep it moving. So, Aries rising, sun or moon people. Well, we're going to have the square uh, between Gemini and Pisces 
um, falling in the 12th and the third houses. And so it's really the third house where you might find that your judgments are not quite clear, not quite sound. You might feel a bit foggy about your choices in third house realms. And of course, if you have to make a business decision, that could be very difficult with the third house here. If you have to make a choice um, or a judgment or a decision for a small business that you run or some buying or selling kind of situation that you're in. If you have to make a choice about some communications or admin services that you're offering, it could be very unclear and you'd be better off to postpone your decision for about a day if you can. What's your judgments too about your relatives and siblings as well? Be aware that it's a bit of a foggy day, an unclear day. And if, you know, say some siblings or relatives or teammates have been behaving in a certain way and and you, you're deciding about something or make up your mind about their behavior, perhaps give it a day, day's grace or so, two days grace to, to make a judgment about their behavior, to make a judgment about their um their attitude or their comments or whatever uh, because we can be a little bit unclear we might not see all the circumstances that have caused a certain behavioral pattern to arise or to exhibit and we will get more clarity if we give ourselves some space for a day or two if you're involved in any workshops or learning opportunities that are going to give you more skills as well um, again choices regarding those things can be a little bit foggy a little bit misty for us on this day so if you've been considering maybe doing a workshop doing a short course doing some sort of um, learning process or teaching even some sort of workshop some skills lessons or something if you can put your decision about undertaking that course or leading that course off for a day or two I would do so so you can make a sound clear judgment as our our choices, Neptune is choices, Neptune is decisions, um, is very, they're very foggy under the influence of Neptune. Moving along, Taurus, Taurus rising, sun or moon people, well the square between Pisces and Gemini between Neptune and um, Mercury is occurring between your 11th and your second houses. So it's in the second house that your judgments can be a little off. And of course, this is very important because it affects our material circumstances in life. If our judgments are not sound, we may spend too much. We may neglect to pay a bill that needs paying. We may um, think we have all the time in the world to pay that car, Red Joe, and then lo and behold, we get pulled over by the cops and there's an $800 fine or something. So your, deci so your decisions and your choices and judgments regarding material circumstances of life, you know, the, the car that you own, the house that you've got, the shoes in the cupboard, the food in the pantry, these choices um, are not going to be well balanced on this day. So, you know, it could be simply that you decide I'm going to postpone going shopping for a day when I you know, then I know I'll go shopping and I'll choose the right products off the shelf for my pantry and I won't get home and be like, Ugh, cursing the fact that I didn't get the sugar or I didn't get the milk or whatever. You know, my, my choices, my decisions will be better on um, the day after or pre preferably two days after Venus square Neptune. Our choices regarding our shopping and regarding our financial expenditure are a little off kilter uh, on this day. Also on this day, the 28th of May, we may find our decisions regarding what we do to honor ourselves are not quite on point. You know, uh, this is self-love, the house of self-love and our valuing of self. And we might make decisions that undermine ourself. We might make choices that self-sabotage who we are. So, you know, knowledge is power. Uh, if you are aware of that, you can sort of stop and consider before you take action on a judgment or a choice. Or better still, you can postpone a judgment or a choice that's going to affect your self-worth for a day or two. All right, Gemini rising, sun or moon people. Well, for you guys, this energy is occurring between your 10th house and your first house, between the two mutable signs and Neptune and, and Venus. So on the 28th of May, this could be a day when your judgment is not quite sound, particularly judgments and choices made regarding yourself and your body. So you might decide, let's use an example, you know, I'm going to go and down the street and I'm going to buy some food for dinner and you choose to buy all the unhealthy junk food for dinner 
And is that a good choice? Eh, probably not for your body and its well-being first house. So choices and judgments that we make regarding our body and its health and the way we exhibit and show up in the world are not quite sound. So it's not a good day for getting a new hairstyle. It's not a good day for you know buying new makeup or um, buying new clothes or anything that has to do with your image and how you show up physically in the world. You know, choices regarding your physical presence um, I would not make until maybe a day or two after this energy, so sort of around the, the 30th of May. On the 28th of May when this energy is playing out, your judgments are not going to be sound regarding how you survive and thrive in the world as well. So try and postpone any judgments that have to do with your ability to assert yourself, with your ability to, um, to survive well, you know? If you have to make a choice let's say about a job or a career that's going to be the determinant of your ability to get a roof over your head or survive if you have to make a choice and you can postpone it at all put it off for um, a day or two and then you'll be clearer about the, the decision that you need to make regarding a job or any other mechanism that's that has to do with your survival and ability to thrive in the world which is a first house thing okay so cancer cancer rising sun or moon people the energy of the square between Pisces, Gemini, and we're looking at Neptune squaring Venus is falling in your ninth house to your twelfth house. So it's in the twelfth house realm that we might be making some rather unsound judgments if we were to make them on the 28th of May. Instead, you know, you want to take some time, you want to think, you want to discern, maybe postpone any judgments for a day or so uh, until this, once this energy has passed. But what am I talking about here? Twelfth house and judgments and, and choices. Maybe it's a choice about where you're going to go for a holiday, uh, where you're going to escape to, where you're going to have a retreat to. And, you know, you might think, oh, that one in the Blue Mountains looks fantastic, but hang on, that one at Byron Bay also looks really terrific too. Well, which one do you choose? Put it off for a day or two and then you'll be able to make a clearer, more solid choice. Neptune squaring Venus can be very deceptive and you might choose something that maybe blows your budget or leaves you feeling like it was the, the wrong choice. So holidays, retreats, escapes, any choices to do with those things, um, postpone, take your time to make a decision. Choices about medicines as well if you can postpone a decision about a medication if you're in a position to be able to do that I would also encourage that as well because the 12th house has to do with medications and I would allow some space for clarity um, if you need to make a choice regarding a medication also the 12th house has to do with our creative expression and for some people especially those who are involved in creative careers you might need a little space and time before you begin a new project don't go beginning it on this day the 28th of May because Venus is a very creative planet and planet of art and um, music and so on so is Neptune but when they're squaring one another in the and the effect is coming to the 12th house of divinely inspired creativity you could be a little off with your choice of art project or musical genre or whatever it happens to be um, give yourself some breathing room before you initiate any new creative project under this influence you don't want to start it with a neptune square to venus and a creative project one thing for those who are spiritually inclined and i know there's a lot of you similar to me who um, watch my channel but it, you might find that your judgments on the 28th of may they're coming from spiritual realms, yes, because we have Neptune, a very spiritualized planet, connecting with Venus in the house of our past ancestors or ethereal beings or other dimensions. That's what the 12th house is. So it's entirely possible that you might be getting downloads from ethereal realms, but they're not going to be the right downloads. So um, if you have to make you know choices like again a creative pursuit might be an example of that you might get an inspiration for a particular uh, artwork that you want to do and you feel like it's coming from outside of you coming from the divine maybe sit with it a couple of days before you begin it because it could be coming from sort of the wrong ethereal realm let's say um, from something that you really don't want to start expressing or working with and it could leave you frustrated in the long run so again if you're getting divine downloads, maybe sit with them for a bit 
you know, maybe you get a hit, an energy hit that all oh, about a divine message for such and such a person. Maybe sit with it a day or two until you maybe get some clarity about that divine channeling, that download, that message for somebody else. Sit with it before you pass it on um, just to make sure it's the real deal and not you're not getting the Neptunian wool pulled over your eyes or some foggy, unclear message that could cause more harm than good. All right, so Leo, Leo rising, sun or moon people. The energy of Mercury, sorry, Venus making a square aspect to Neptune is falling for you in the 11th house to Neptune in the 8th house. So it's in 11th house realms that you might be finding your judgment is a little unsound because this is a hard aspect. Neptune can pull the wool over your eyes and in the 11th house it is friendships. It's to do with our friends and connections and networks. You might make some rather unsound choices with friends. Maybe you meet somebody and you decide, oh, I want to be, you know, part of their friendship group or I want them to be part of my friendship group and you get to know them and it's like, oh, what was I thinking? This person is totally driving me bonkers. So your judgments and choices regarding new friendships could be off. Your judgments and choices regarding existing friendships might be a little off kilter as well. So a friend might say something and you make a quick assessment of, oh, they're being nasty. Oh, I don't like that at all. I'm going to have a word to them. And you take action on that and then you find out that they weren't being nasty at all and that you'd taken it completely the wrong way and you'd made a poor call in that regard and then the friendship was jeopardized. So there's a little illustration. I'm not saying that's how it's going to work for everybody, but judgments and choices our analysis um, with friends and friendship experiences could be quite off uh, on this day so allow a bit of time before you take action you know give yourself some space of a day or two um, to sit with a certain judgment or a certain choice regarding friendships and then move on it um, once things become clearer this is also the house of our dreams and goals and aspirations as well and, in, you know, you might have been sitting with a dream or a goal or an aspiration for some time and you make a decision on this day, I'm going to take this leap of faith. I'm going to take this step forward towards achieving and attaining my goal. Uh, can I ask you to just wait a day, maybe two, before you take that action? Because you want to be crystal clear when you're working towards a dream or an aspiration or a goal. You want to be crystal clear about your, your movements, your choices and what you're you're doing to towards achieving that dream and this is not a good day for being crystal clear this is a day of fogginess of things not being quite 100 percent right so give it some space give it some breathing room before you move forward this is may the 28th and venus square to neptune can leave you feeling very foggy and you might even spend money, potentially, Neptune, sorry, Venus is money. You might even spend money on a dream or a goal or an aspiration on this day. And then, you know, you, you watch your money disintegrate. Um, you watch it disappear out of your fingers and you're like, hang on a minute. But, I, you know, and you feel like you've, you've lost out or you've been deceived um, regarding some opportunity for a goal or a dream. So hold tight, wait a couple of days and the energy will be less detrimental. Okay, if we are Virgo rising sun or moon people the energy of this square between neptune and venus is falling in angular houses for you virgo from pisces to gemini 10th house seventh house and so this 10th house is where you're going to notice this energy playing out the most this is where you might find that your judgments and choices are not perhaps as sound as they should be. This could be, you know, in how you're relating to a boss. It could be uh, career choices. It could be choices that you make that help you present yourself to the world in order to achieve the heights that you desire. So choices that we make regarding our public persona are a little bit foggy and a little bit skewed on May the 28th. Let's use some illustrations. Um, you know, maybe you make a choice about what to wear to work one day to your career. Maybe you've got a high powered meeting that you need to attend and you choose to wear Venus's clothes after all. You choose to wear something that's maybe a little bit too low cut or something that's um, a little bit too bright and bold and sassy and it causes detriment and problem to your public persona and your reputation. So, our judgments, our choices regarding career, worldly aspiration and how we succeed in life can be a little bit off 
Now, I'm not saying don't wear something bright and bold and sassy to your meeting. I'm not saying don't wear a low cut top if it looks good on you. Why not? Um, we all have the freedom to, to make choice. But just know that the choices we do make on this day will affect our public persona, our career opportunities, and the choices we make could be a little bit off. Um, not on point. So maybe it's a good idea to ask advice from a roommate or a flatmate or, you know, your partner or something like that. You know, does this outfit look okay for this particular heavy duty meeting I'm going to? Um, but that's just a, a frivolous example. There are obviously many, many ways that this could play out where your choices and your judgments regarding career and career moves and success in the world could be um, influenced uh, in the negative by Neptune square to Venus. Um, I would encourage you if you can, uh, obviously in the case of a power meeting and what to wear to a power meeting, you can't really put that off. But if there are choices that you can postpone for a day or two regarding career and worldly success or relationship with authority figures, if you can postpone any kind of decisions in those realms for a day or two, then do so when this energy is not playing out and causing um, so much upheaval. So that's uh, for Virgo rising. Now, if you're Libra rising, Sun or Moon, the energy of Venus squaring Neptune in Gemini and Pisces is falling for you in the ninth house to the sixth house. So it's the ninth house that's going to be most impacted by this square. And it, it's the ninth house where your judgments and choices may not be quite sound, might, might not be quite on point. What might this look like? Well, this is a house of belief. It's ethics, it's morals. You might make a choice regarding some ethical, you know, or integrous action, and you might get two or three days down the track and go, oh my God, that was so unethical, so unintegrous. Why did I make that choice? And the reason would be because it was unclear to you. You didn't quite see it for what it was. Neptune makes things foggy. And Venus is the planet of choice, where we make our choices and judgments. So, of course, you need to be very careful regarding, you know, ethical, moral, integrous choices uh, on May the 28th. Maybe get some advice if you have to make a big decision or even better still postpone it, a big decision regarding that's an ethical or moral choice. Postpone it for a day or two until you got some clarity and some distance um, that can help you make a wiser choice. This is also the house of other cultures and so maybe you, you, you have to make a judgment call about a certain cultural you know, activity or celebration that you attend or maybe a trip overseas or uh, even just a short trip to a local other cultural restaurant or celebration of some description. Now judgments and choices may not be quite bang on. So if you're looking to book a holiday to an overseas destination, maybe give it a day or two before you make that booking because you might make uh, an unsound choice or a choice that you regret later simply because Neptune's causing fogginess with the decisions that you're going to be making in ninth house realms. And the same goes for if you are planning on you know, studying something at a high level, maybe university degree, maybe doing an astrological degree, potentially, uh, you know, maybe studying something online, um, any, anything like that, uh, give it a day or two before you sign up because the, the judgment and the choice you make regarding which course you do, which university degree you undertake or whatever can be a little bit, a little bit off, a little bit something not quite right, something that you might be disillusioned by in the long run or regret. We don't want that. Finally, this is the House of Inspirational Figures people who we look up to and admire and you you might make some choices and decisions regarding someone you admire that you know you regret in the long run maybe I don't know you, like Deepak Chopra is coming to speak in Melbourne and you decide oh, I love Deepak Chopra I'm gonna go listen to him speak and you pay a fortune on this day for your ticket and then two days later you discover that tickets were going on sale for half price or something and you're like oh my you know, um, I'm not saying that that's a scenario that will play out with this particular situation, but um, our judgment and our choice in, in relation to some inspirational figure or someone we admire or look up to can be a little bit not quite on point, not quite best for us. So if you need to make a judgment call in a scenario like that, maybe allow it for allow a day or two, uh, particularly as Venus is spending money. And if it's a judgment 
that involves spending money regarding an inspirational figure, give yourself a day or two so you don't lose money um, as Neptune is losses. Uh, it's connected in, in a similar way to the 12th house, so it's, it dissolves things. So uh, it can dissolve your money regarding an inspirational figure. So that's what we're seeing for Libra, Libra rising, sun or moon people. Now Scorpio rising, sun or moon people. This energy for you is falling um, in a square between your 8th house and your 5th house, Neptune to Venus. And it's in the 8th house that you're going to notice this playing out most strongly. So this is where you might be having some judgments and choices that you need to make that may not be very easy to make and may not be quite clear and that you can make let's just say it plainly, the wrong choices. What might that look like? Well, you know, maybe you're writing a will or a le um, some sort of inheritance document or, um, you know, you're, you're dealing with some insurance or something and you need to make a choice about who such and such, uh, who gets my book collection and who gets, you know, uh, my car and what have you. And, and you, you may make inappropriate choices on this day with um, wills, legacies, inheritances and so forth. So it's not a good day for that sort of thing because Neptune will make things foggy and not clear. If you've got to make a choice about uh, some sort of community property, which is an eighth house matter, maybe you know, you're running a, a yoga workshop and you've got to choose, okay, am I going to go to that public hall or will I go to that community center? I don't know which one. Postpone your choice for a day or two and you'll have more clarity and more insight into the decision that you need to make. Because when Neptune is squaring Venus, you, your decisions, your choices are going to be foggy and unclear and it's not gonna be easy to make a choice and the choices that you make are likely to be a little bit off too, not quite right for you and you might lose out in some way. The eighth house also has to do with psychological healing. You know, there's three healing houses and the eighth house has to do with our deep inner psyche, our deep self. And so this is, this is a house of healing. Now, if you have to make choices about healing, um, healing the psychological self, like which psychologist am I going to go and see, which book am I going to buy that's all about self-development, um, which astrologer am I going to go and get a reading from. If you have to make all these sorts of choices, you may make a, a sort of a unaligned choice on this day that you regret. Better to postpone your decision about which book to buy, which astrologer to get a reading from, which psychologist to see for a couple of days uh, in order to be clear about what you're doing and to get the best results out of that experience. Word to the wise. Okay, to, um, Sagittarius rising, sun or moon people. Well, you've got an interesting week with the full moon in your sign this week, guys. So I hope it goes well for you. But today in the All Signs Breakdown, we're looking at the energy on the 28th of May between Neptune and Venus in mutable signs on angles for you guys. Let me just hold this straight here. This is mostly going to affect your house of relationships more than anything else because Venus is falling in Gemini, your seventh house. And so any judgments, any choices, any decisions that you need to make with your partners or on behalf of your partners, business partners or marriage partners, um, they could be a little bit unsound on this day. And really, you would be better off to postpone any big ticket decisions for a day or two. Also contracts, and if you've got to sign any contracts, put it off for a day or two. In fact, we're in Mercury retrograde, so it's not a good time to be signing contracts at all until Mercury goes direct. So it's really very simple in the seventh house. Decisions regarding partners, decisions regarding business, decisions regarding contracts, postpone them where you can. Um, Venus, square Neptune, things are unclear. Venus is choices, Neptune is um, to make things foggy in a square aspect where things are more um, difficult. Things are not clear, you don't see things for what they are, you can be deceived. Postpone decisions where possible. So that's a simple one really, isn't it? Don't worry, you'll have plenty more to deal with other than that in this week ahead as you've got the eclipse in your seventh house, Sagitt uh, sorry, in your first house, Sagittarius. Capricorn rising, sun or moon people. Well, the energy of Mercury squaring to Venus is falling for you in the sixth house to the uh, Neptune in the third house. And so it's in sixth house realms that you're going to feel the weight of perhaps confusion regarding 
decisions and choices. And sixth house things might be choices about health, about well-being, about your diet, about what exercise routine to undertake. It could be about choices uh, and how you're going to deal with that overdue credit card bill or that electricity bill that needs paying. It could be that you have to make some decisions, some tough decisions regarding regarding work or work situations or choice of you know work and how you pay the bills and so forth judgments and decisions and choices regarding the mundane ordinary things of life become hard now they become hoggy become unclear and you know if we make choices on this day we actually might make I hate to say the wrong choice, but a choice that we regret or we become disillusioned by. Neptune is disillusioned. Neptune is to be confused. And Venus is choices. Venus um, is a planet of decision making. So uh, it's hard in the sixth house. The sixth house rules so many everyday ordinary things in our life. And we need to make choices every day. What am I going to wear today? What am I going to eat today? What am I, how am I going to drive to work? You know, which, which route will I take? The mundane, everyday, ordinary things, our choices, our decisions can become very clouded and difficult. So that, that can be hard in the sixth house. But if you're conscious and you're aware, okay, I need to sort of think this through. Is this going to be for my best? And if you can really, no, don't overthink, but ponder things enough to sort of be secure about your decision a little more, you might do better. If you can postpone any decisions, like just say you've got an electricity bill that needs paying um, and you're wondering which account you're going to pull the money out of to pay it, um, postpone that decision if you can for a day or two and then you'll be clear, oh, look, I'll take it out of this account. There's more money there. You know, it, it's not that the sixth house is a house of money, but it is a house of poverty and you want to make the right choice. So if you can hold off with your bills and your debts, which are six house things, um, and, and make choices about those bills, those debts, those other mundane things that I that I described, uh, if you can put them off for a day or two, you'll be in a better place to be more clear about the actions you should take and feel better about the decisions you take and less likely to be deceived or have the wool pulled over your eyes because of the decisions that you've made as well. Word to the wise there for Capricorn people. Now for Aquarius and where we've gone all the way around, wowee. Aquarius rising, sun and moon people. Let's get that right. If you are Aquarius rising, sun and moon, then the Venus square to Neptune is occurring in your second house to the fifth house. And so it's in fifth house realms that you might have some issues with judgments and decision making. Venus is to make decisions. Um, Neptune clouds things by a square aspect. It, may, it gives us disillusionment and disappointment. So making choices, making decisions, on the 28th of May regarding fifth house things could be somewhat challenging and if you can postpone those decisions in any way it's a good idea to decisions regarding children and you know maybe your, your son is trying to decide which high school he wants to go to and you know put it off for a day or two when things can be clearer and not so foggy with Neptune square to Venus maybe you, you know you're looking at a choice as a parent like what kindergarten am I going to send my kids to or should I even send them to kindergarten Perhaps postpone your decision for a day or two where you can and you will make better choices that you won't regret so children are one area of choice but also lovers dating romance I mean it could be quite simply that you're trying to decide where you're going to go for that hot date with your new guy or your new girl and you know will I go hot air ballooning with them or will we go white white water rafting together hmm which one well maybe leave it a day or two before you make that decision for this hot date because you might make the uh, choice that you regret you go white water rafting you end up soaked to the skin in the creek and <laughs> and you're thinking well this wasn't very romantic after all but you know make some post postpone decision making about dating and romance and love and all that nice fun stuff for a day or two and you will make a better choice that sits better with you and that, that you don't regret that you're not feeling disappointed by or disillusioned by and that also goes regarding you know who you want to date I'm talking about having romance and fun um, but maybe you, you have to make you're in a situation where you have to make a decision about a lover will I say see you later to this person or will I welcome them further into my life you know big decisions people can sometimes be facing and this is the day the May 28th where you don't want to make a choice you want to put some space and some time between um, between this day and uh, you making a choice regarding a lover or a, a person that you are dating so give yourself some time um, because you'll be again cloudy in your decision making you won't 
you'll be sort of tossing and turning with your decision. You are unlikely to make the right decision either because there is this fog, this mist, this lack of clarity around the decisions that you're making. And a final thing for the fifth house, it is a house of ego and self-expression. So choices that you make that are going to put your own ego needs out there in the world can be a little bit off as well on this day, you know, and uh, we make a poor judgment about what we egoically need. Now, there's nothing wrong with ego. Everybody needs an ego or else we'd just be puddles of mush in the world and not accomplishing anything. You've got to have a bit of ego. Too much ego is not good. No ego, too little ego, and you, you, don't, you don't get anywhere in life. So judgments and choices that are fueling our ego can be a little bit off. I'm not saying overblown. I'm not saying egoic. But um, we might do something to make us feel good about who we are and uh, to express ourselves in the world and then it backfires on us. So perhaps be a bit cautious too, Aquarius people, about the decisions you make that are based in an egoic need. Um, and if you postpone them, you might find that a day or two later you might not need to even go down that road to fuel um, some sort of egoic need at all. So I hope that makes sense to people. But that is what we're seeing with the astrology of this week and what a fascinating week it is for us all. I'm going to close with a prayer and then we're going to go to the bloopers and I'm so glad that you're enjoying the bloopers. Energy of love in the universe, we thank you that we have messages from the divine every day, every moment from the stars and the planets in the heavens. Help us to tune in to get the messages that our soul needs to make right choices, right decisions, to lead our best life, our happiest life, and to be a blessing to others. And so it is. Well, thanks for joining me. Enjoy the bloopers, and I'll catch you next week. So that's how we... They might blub the luck. Don't get computers member. Um. I want to suck your blood. All right.